Hello, everybody. Welcome to our lesson. Today's topic is the magnetic force on a current carrying loop. So this is the goal of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, you'll be able to describe and calculate the force acting on a current carrying loop, explain the working principles of electric motors, and explain the working principles of a galvanometer. You have probably seen this kind of videos from YouTube or probably you have done on your own in physics projects. This is not magic or some trick. It has physical laws behind that we are going to discuss in this lesson. But what is the physics behind? It's called a simple electric motor. Well, any electric motor consists of a loop of wire and a magnet. And when you stick a loop of wire in a magnetic field, something a little stranger happens. The loop of wire turns and rotates. Okay, but why does it rotate? Let's take a look at this loop of wire. The horizontal parts of the loop are parallel to the magnetic field, so it won't exert a force on them. But the Vertical parts of the loop are perpendicular to the magnetic field, so it will exert a force on them, a force that turns the loop. And by the second right-hand rule, we can find the directions of those forces. They appear to be opposite on each vertical side of the loop. To sum up, we can say the magnetic field creates a torque on the wire, which rotates the wire. Next we will calculate the torque on this loop. To calculate the torque on this loop, we have to calculate the forces acting on each side of the rectangle when a current flows in the loop. The rectangular loop of widths A and lengths B is located in a uniform field as shown in the picture. The forces on the two horizontal sides are zero since the wires are parallel to the field. The forces on the two perpendicular sides to the magnetic field lines are F1 and F2 respectively. These forces must be equal in size because they have the same currents through the wire, the same length of wire located in the magnetic field. Only thing that differs is their directions. That's because they have opposite currents flowing. And the magnitude of these forces can be found as follows. I it's the current, B it's the length of the wire, capital B it's the magnetic field strength. And there is a torque on the rectangular loop about the horizontal axis. And you know that torque can be found by multiplying force to the distance between the force and then axis of rotation. There are two forces, it means that we have two torques and these torques have the same direction. The torque is given by this equation F1 multiplied to A over 2. Why A over 2? Because the distance between the force and the axis of rotation is half of the width, it's A over 2. By substituting the value for the force into the equation, we get this. Further calculations will lead to this equation. And as I said, A is the width, B is the length. So A times B is the multiplication of the sides of the rectangular loop. And it's the area of that loop. And the equation can be simplified as follows. So maximum torque can be found by multiplying current to the magnetic field strength and to the area of the loop. So it means the bigger the current, the faster the motor. The bigger the area, also the faster the motor. And the stronger the magnet, the faster the motor. 
but this equation can be used only when the plane of a loop is parallel to the magnetic field lines. So by this equation you can only find the maximum torque exerted on a single turn loop. We need an equation which can be valid for any position of the loop and for any amount of turns of the loop. So we need an universal equation. Well, this is the universal equation. It's valid for any number of turns of the loop and for any position of the loop. So compared from the previous equation, we have an extra n here, letter n, which represents the number of turns in the loop and function of sine. The angle alpha is the angle between the normal of the plane of the loop and the magnetic field lines. Why the function of sine? Because sine alpha is equal to 1 when the loop has a maximum torque and we get the equation for the maximum torque as in previous equation and sine alpha is 0 when the loop has a minimum torque. Besides electric motors, a current carrying coil can be used in measuring devices such as a galvanometer. A galvanometer is a device that is used to measure a large range of currents from 20 amperes down to the microampere range. And let's look what is inside the galvanometer. Torque is proportional to the current flowing in the coil. This effect can be used to measure current. In fact, most common electric meters are based on the movement of a coil in a magnetic field. Because the normal direction of the loop tries to align with the field, the coil rotates so as to point this vector towards the south pole. However, a spring attached to the coil provides a torque to prevent this rotation. The sensitivity of the galvanometer depends on the stiffness of the restoring spring and the number of turns of the wire in, on the coil. So this is the working principle of a galvanometer. And it's the end of the lesson. If you like our video, please subscribe and share.